Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and welcome to the channel. Today we're doing a flight range test on the Spark. We're going to test how far this thing can go up here on Maui and I'm just going to fly it straight out this way. Try to stay around 400 feet altitude and go as far as I can. Just see how exactly how far this thing can go. This is the uh, the main controller and I have the finally got the OTG cable in and so I should be able to get the best possible reception. Now I'm using the D DJI Mavic uh, sunshade here. I'll have this linked in the description as well. All right, so I wanna say we're getting about, you can see there on the camera hopefully, about eight miles per hour, like five to eight coming from that direction. So that's actually perfect because I wanna be coming with the wind coming back, fighting the wind going out, just in case there's problems with the battery getting low, it'll kind of drift with the wind coming back. Cool, so um, I got the LG G6 phone here. I'm gonna go ahead and record with the AZ Record app on the screen, what's going on here. And also on the drone, I'm just using the stock 16 gig card that comes in the drone, so we'll be able to see the video. This only does 1080p, but I'll have the 1080p video up on the screen so you can see that. And also what's going on with the um, OSD here on the phone. All right, let's get this thing booted up and see how far we can get. All right, cool, looks like we're all connected, 99% power. And we got about 13 satellites on our GPS, so let's go ahead and launch this bad boy. And the thing you'll notice about the um, Spark is it doesn't have any precision takeoff. So um, I noticed that this one doesn't have, kind of like the Mavic and the Phantom 4s do, there's no precision landing for some reason option. But it is super precise in my other reviews. Uh, it was very precise, so. Okay, so we're starting to record. And let's go ahead and take off. Cool. So just to kind of help it out, I'm gonna go up, you know, about 30 to 50 feet. I'll go ahead and tilt the gimbal down here. Okay, so I'm going up. With the Mavic, you gotta be around 32 feet for the precision landing to work. So I'm just gonna go right around there just to kind of help it out. And for this flight test, I'm gonna go into sport mode right away. So I'm switching this button to the right and I'll have all this up on the screen so you can see it. We're in sport mode and I'm just gonna go straight out and up. I'm not gonna go over 400 feet. I'm gonna try to keep it lower so our above ground altitude is also 400 feet, but that's kind of hard to tell because we have no above ground altitude. Anyway, pushing forward, starting to go that away. Cool. So I'm just gonna kinda go straight out here. I'm gonna start giving it some more forward pitch. Now full forward pitch. And I'm just going straight. Um, there we go, that's a little better. You can kinda see the trees there. And now the altitude is gonna drop on the ground and so my drone's gonna be getting higher from the ground. So I'm gonna try to judge it. And this is kind of where, you know, I really wish um, manufacturers and also the FAA should get together and get some kind of above ground altitude um, reading up here on the screen. So us as drone pilots really know just how high we are above the ground. It looks like we're possibly getting into the clouds here. Okay. How's our signal doing? So our signal is already getting a little bit low. I'm gonna give the drone a little bit more altitude here. Maybe that'll help a bit. Um, wow, okay. So we're getting a little bit of choppiness in the video. It looks like my video is, I'm gonna try to bring it down a bit actually. Let's bring the drone down. So I'm holding down on the throttle just a little bit. 
And I'm kind of trying to look um, where exactly, exactly I am here. There we go. Okay. So I'm, you see I'm clicking on the, the map here. I just clicked on the that little target reticle. And that's kind of showing how much power this thing has given us. And I also kind of have a a compass here so it's kind of showing me where the drone is which way to kind of face to keep the drone in sights so I'm going to kind of click on that and I'm going to click on the map so that's pretty cool check that out so we can just see where the drones going if you wanted to It looks like we may be kind of losing connection already. I can still see my distance ticking away. So we're over a mile. You know, we're at uh, 7,000 feet. I still have full pitch forward here. So that's about a mile and a half. Okay, so you saw that come up on the screen where it's kind of dropping in and out, asking me if I want to re return to home, but I'm going to say no. Still saying no signal. Getting really choppy on the video. I'll have that up on the screen. So this is my FPV I'm looking at with you guys here. It's very choppy, but it's still manageable. And I'm still full pitch forward on the stick here. And it does look like it's, you know, keeping it... Oh, everything got kind of black and white. No image. Let's see if that image pops back in. So this is where the difference in technology might take an effect. This isn't using Lightbridge or AccuSync, or AccuSync, whatever you call it. This is just like a, another proprietary Wi-Fi that DJI calls it, so... Um, we'd definitely be able to get further if we had those other technologies. Okay, aircraft disconnected, no image available. Okay, so it's turning around. And guys, we're at um, just about 10,000 feet, 9,948 9, feet. So that's just about two miles. I think a mile is 5,280 feet, so just short of two miles. I'm gonna go ahead and let this thing come home now. I'm just gonna press OK. It looks like it's already in its return to home. So, unfortunately we can't stop this beeping. Um, let's see if I can do anything with the gimbal. Nope. So nothing with the gimbal. So I'm going to try to hold the controller a little bit further away from the microphone so it's not so annoying. But um, there we go. Click on the map again. Yeah, you can see that bugger moving along the line. It's following the same line it went out at. And it thinks it's only about 100 feet high, 98 feet, 99 feet, but uh, it's definitely higher than that because it slopes down here. It's saying large wind velocity. Air came up. It can sense if it's, you know, gusting winds and stuff. So it was less than 50% or more than 50% power left when it turned around. Um, so we could probably go further than that on battery power. And you know what I have is I have some of those parabolic dishes. Maybe I'll do another flight test and slap on those parabolic dishes over the antennas here and see if we can get even further range with those, which we should. But we can see it coming back here. It's coming back at 22 miles per hour. I think it was going out at, gosh, around 30, 30 or so. I didn't even look, but I'll have had that up on the screen so you could see how fast that was going out with my full pitch forward in sport mode. Again, sorry about the beeping. That's just kind of the nature of the beast when it's in return to home. I'm just gonna kind of let it do its thing and let it land and just see how accurate it is um, after going that close to two miles out. I guess that would be like, you know, 
seven, five miles, a mile and three quarters we got. So, oops, it kind of looks to me like the app crashed when I tilted my phone. So I'm going back into the app. Yeah, I think it glitched because I tilted to um, portrait. So I'm just going back into the app and then clicking back to go fly. At least this thing does have those smart GPS functions. So if that ever happens and you crash, the drone will just sit there unless it's in its return to home like this until you get back up and running. So definitely good features on these drones. All right, so I'm just gonna let her come home. We are now 30,000 feet away, or 3,700 feet away, 3,700, now 3,500. We are coming back at quite a good clip, 22 miles per hour. So now that we're doing this, um, it seems like this volume, this return to home beeping volume is a little quieter than the Mavics. So maybe DJI can do something like in the settings where we can shut off that beep or either make it quieter or beep less. Maybe, you know, like one beep every five to 10 seconds or something, a double beep, who knows. But you know, it doesn't really bother me. It's just for recording purposes and people watching the video, it might be a little irritating. Cool, so we're almost home. We're um, 1,700 feet away. It's coming back at a consistent 22 miles per hour, so it looks like that's its maximum return to home um, speed. And it should know that when we're going out at like 30 miles per hour or so in sport mode, it's calculating battery power left, how f where it is in its coordinate in space, and also where it's coming from its coordinate home coordinate so it's calculating all that on the fly as you're going out to know when to return to home and to know how much power it's gonna have if it's coming back at 22 miles per hour okay I can hear it come in there it is I can see it coming on back okay you can see it's slowing down approaching its return to home point I still can't do anything with the gimbal yet, probably until it starts coming down. So it's gonna start thinking and there we go. So now I can do the gimbal, you see? So it locks you out of the gimbal when it's in return to home and it gives you back control when it starts to land. So it's readjusting to its orientation of um, where it was facing when it launched. And now it's gonna come down, hey guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Let's see how close it lands to this helipad. Wow, it readjusted itself a little bit on the fly. I'm gonna tilt the camera up as to not really mess it up. Maybe I'll tilt it back down. Well, almost spot on, just right on the edge, but not bad at all. We have our overall status again. And you know, that was perfect because we have 18% power left. So that was actually perfect because you don't really want to drop your battery anyway for longevity um, much lower than 20% consistently. So we can see where it landed. It was like just a foot away from the middle of the H. So that's totally acceptable, especially for almost two miles. Cool, so you know what I'm gonna do? Um, I have a couple more batteries, or at least one more fully charged one, I think. I'm gonna put on the parabolic dishes and do that same flight. Um, might as well. That'll be a good test because we'll be doing it at the same time, the same weather, and see how much difference you get with those parabolic dishes. So let me go throw those on, put a new battery in here, and let's try that again. All right, guys, well, shucks. Um, 
I think we're gonna have to do that parabolic dish range test in another video. I'll just go ahead and make a specific video for that only because um, I guess the other two batteries I had were only half charged and reason being I thought they're all fully charged because I had them on that Flamore combo three battery bar for like a week and I took off one of the batteries to do some updates this morning and then put that battery back on so that one fully charged but the other two I guess it had been long enough where they discharged even though they were still on the charger so keep that in mind something good to know if you do have that Flymore combo charger that three bay battery charger that the Flymore combo comes with or you bought it separate if you leave the batteries on there they'll still discharge to 50 percent after a certain amount of days um, so that's what happened I had one full full charge battery that I did that first range test with and the other two were only 50 percent I did try to charge it in my car but I only got up to three lights and it's been hours I've been doing some other testing up here so I wanted to give it a full charge and the clouds are rolling in and it's getting kind of later in the day and I don't really want to wait super long for that thing to charge so we'll do another test with these Skyree parabolic antennas um, just an assumption technically I should be getting more range with these um, since it can fly a little further on the battery power and we flew about a mile and three quarters I should be getting at least two miles if not more with these guys again we got about a mile and three quarters out almost two miles anyways hope you enjoyed that range test for the DJI spark I do a lot of videos like this guys so please check out the channel and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching